Good morning, children. Uh, it's Monday today, and it's the start of the week. And um, for our English today, we are going to be looking at reading. Um, I hope you've all had a good weekend. Uh, recharge your batteries a little bit, ready for this week's uh, learning. So, in reading for today, what you're going to be doing is looking um, at a text and thinking about answering questions based on vocabulary. Um, and basically, a vocabulary question um, is asking you to give or explain the meaning of words or words in a context. Um, so it basically means that you have to work out the meaning of words you don't know, or you may have a partial understanding, um, and what the meaning is within the context um, of that particular text. Um, so it says to do this, you have to look at the words or phrases you're unsure with in the context, um, and it's using the stories so far, the sentences around them, what you already know about the plot to figure out what the word must mean. Um, and also your understanding of maybe what that particular word means um, in different contexts as well to help you out. So um, let's have a look at some example type vocabulary questions and there's different ways that they um, are given in, um, in questions. So let's have a look. Um, one such thing is the closest in meaning. Um, so it uh, will give you an example of a word from a text and ask you to tick a synonym um, for that word. And we've been looking at synonyms in our grammar lessons and also within our reading um, sessions before. Um, in this instance, you've got uh, four options um, and it's asking you to tick one. So just think about what um, is a synonym, a synonym of the word crouched. Um, and like I said right at the beginning, this could be um, a number of ways you could do this. Um, you could think to yourself, well, what are other synonyms of crouch to start off with? Um, and you may come up with one of these four answers. If not, what we've done in class before is had a look at each of those words and think, well, is that word, could it fit into that sentence? And sometimes you would replace this word with the actual word within the sentence and it won't make sense and that's maybe indicating that that's not a synonym of that word. Sometimes when you replace the word with uh, the word in the text it makes sense so it indicates where it is. Um, because you've got four options as well just think well if it's if uh, in this instance the Siamese cat crouched on a tree branch if we think about it we can get rid of some of these. Crouched could mean balanced Squatted could also mean there. Trembled. Well, we know crouch. If you're crouching down, you're not trembling. Um, and also, if you're crouching down, you haven't. The cat's not pouncing because that's a movement, um, um, a fierce movement. So, if we're not too sure, you could get rid of some of those options to give yourself or narrow down the possibilities of what they are. So that's one type. The closest in meaning. Let's have a look at another type then. Uh, Alternative wording question. Um, now again, similar to here, you need to tick one and it gives you four options. And it says this type of question will give you an example of a phrase from the text and ask you to tick another way that the author could have written it while still keeping the same meaning. So these ones here, you're thinking, how could it be rewritten but have the same meaning? So that's the alternative wording type questions. Um, another example is the define it question um, and this type will give you an example of a word or phrase from the text and ask you to explain what it means in your own words. Gabby secured her feet and hands and climbed higher. What does secured her feet and hands mean? So you need to try to work out well what does secured mean? Now we know secured means maybe holding on tightly, not wanting to move. Um, and we can back that up by securing her feet and hands. Mean Well, it means that she's trying to grab hold of the tree, isn't she, so she doesn't move or fall off. And so that's a define it type question. So have a look at another example. Uh, a find and copy question. If you remember in our lessons, what we ask you to do, if it says find and copy one word, that's all that you need to write is your answer, just one word. Not a sentence, not a phrase, just one word. In the second example, it says find and copy a group of words. So that means a group is going to be two or more. 
Now, what we said before in lessons is when it's asking you to copy one word is try to find that word and underline it in the text. So when you're given your answer, you can just write it um, because you can identify it straight away in that text. So in the first example, it says find and copy one word from this paragraph that was the closest meaning to motivated. Now, before you try and look at that paragraph to try and find um, the closest in meaning to motivated, you may think to yourself, well, what does motivated mean? What words could that potentially be? And sometimes you do come up with a word even before looking in the text. Once you think you found in the text, underline it so when you write your answer in, it's easy to identify already. So that's a find and copy type question. Uh, the multiple find, uh, similar to the last one, um, it'll ask you to find two or more words or phrases within the text which mean or show the same thing. So very similar to the previous um, type question. And this one's a multiple question um, and it would ask you to choose from one of the answers provided. All right, now that's quite nice, isn't it? Because you know that one of those four is going to be the answer. Now, with those types of questions, if you have got a choice of maybe four options, never leave it blank because there's a possibility, if you're, if you're not too sure, you could get it right, especially if you've narrowed down the options. If you're left with two and you're not too sure, you've done a really good job. Uh, sometimes you do get it right, um, which is really good. Um, so what might vocabulary questions ask? Um, for example, what does this word tell us about the character set in atmosphere? Look at the sentence passage and circle a word that means the same as. Which word phrase gives us the impression that the main character is? Why did the author use the word to describe? What might that mean? What do you think the author is saying when they write? So it's asking you for your understanding about the word within that context. Now, like we did last week, we'll do an example together before you then go on and do your independent reading and answer questions based on that text. Now, you're familiar with this text, Raider's Peril, because uh, we used it for last week's reading. Um, and what I'd like you to do is read the text here and think about these questions as you are reading them and try to identify what the answers are. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is have a look at those questions, read the text, pause the video, and have a go at answering those questions, and then we'll come back and have a look to see how we got those answers. Don't forget, children, if you've got this printed out and you want to underline where you're getting the answer from, that is brilliant stuff. Okay, please do do that because it helps out. So pause the video now and then when you've answered those questions, unpause the video. Brilliant children, I'm sure that you gave it a really good go. Um, now sorry about the slide, it's moved down a little bit for some reason, I'm not too sure why. Let me see if I can uh, move it up a little bit. Oh, there you go. Excellent. Um, so what I've done is you can see that for different colours here, one you associate it with the text here, this is where I've got my answers from. And that's a really um, good thing to do within your right, uh, reading papers is to actually underline where you're getting your text um, or your answers from. Um, so those are the answers to those questions. See how you got on. Uh, you may have got some right, you may not have uh, necessarily got them right, but I'm sure that you had a really good go at that. Um, now your task for today then is to uh, have a look at uh, the attached file, which is a midnight miller, and have a go at answering some vocabulary questions. Right children, all the best. Have a really super reading session for this week, and I will see you next week for another reading session. Have a good Monday children.